In this video, I'll be showing you how to pick up objects really simply and have collisions while holding and be able to throw the objects. Community, I've got a simple scene set up with our cube that we used in the last tutorial. I've got the FPS controller from Standard Assets. And just to kind of just demonstrate the collisions a little bit later, uh, I've got the floor, which is just a plane object, and then we've got a cube just for our wall. Okay, so in our FPS controller, we want to create our guide just like we did before. So just go ahead and click on first person character right here and create empty. And our empty object we're going to call guide. And same as before, we're going to move it on the Z transform uh, to 2.5. And that's it for our scene setup. So now we just want to go to our script, which we want to create on our object that we're going that we're going to pick up. So in my case, it's the puzzle cube. Uh, in your case, it may be anything, whether it be a weapon, uh, a tool, whatever you want. Uh, just make sure it has the script attached. So also on that object, make sure you have a rigid body with use gravity set to true and is kinematic to false. That's really important for later on. So we're going to add component. We're going to call it pickup, new script, C sharp create and add. Okay, so once we're in Visual Studio, uh, we can start off with deleting our start function. We don't need that. And we're going to start by creating our variables. We're going to need a float, and we're going to call it throw force. And by default, we're setting it to 600. You can set it to whatever you want. This is just going to determine how far the object is thrown compared to its rigid body mass. Next, we're going to create a vector 3, and we're going to call this object position. Uh, next, another float called distance to determine how far the player can be and still pick it up. Now we're going on to our public variables. We're going to create a public bool called can hold and set it to true by default. Public game object called item. Public game object again, but this time we're going to call it temp parent. And then a, another public bool called is holding. And by default we're setting this to false. Okay. So now in our update function, we're going to come back to this, but this is where we want kind of everything to happen. So check if is holding. So we're going to come back to that in just a minute. So we want to create a couple new functions. Um, same as the last video, we're going to be doing void on mouse down for our functions. Uh, but some people in the comments requested for something along the lines of pressing E to pick up the object. So it's actually very similar, almost exactly the same, but rather than using void on mouse down like we're going to use right here, uh, other people might want to use uh, uh, on mouse over and we don't want that to be private. Okay so in our function we're gonna check uh, or if on mouse down so then is holding and we're gonna say if that's true then item dot get component rigid body and we're going to set use gravity to false so that way it's not going to fall all over the scene when we're holding it. So is it to false? Um, then we're going to go back into our rigid body again. So item.getComponent uh, and rigid body. And we're going to set uh, detect, detect collisions and we're going to set that to true. So detect collisions, set that to true. Okay, and misspelled that. Uh, still misspelled that. <laughs> Alright, there we go. And that is it for our on mouse down. Now we want to do kind of the reverse, so avoid on mouse up uh, to let go of our object. And we still don't want that to be private. Remove that. Alright, and we just want to set is holding and set it to false. Okay, so now coming back to our update function, we actually want to check if is holding is true or not. So we're going to start by saying if is holding is true, then in here we want to go item dot get component rigid body again dot velocity. And we're going to set it to vector three dot zero. Now one thing that's uh, worth noting is in the last tutorial. We didn't really mess around with the rigid body uh, velocity or angular velocity or anything like that too much. Instead, in our update function, what we were doing uh, was setting the transform position directly. And what I found out is that that actually fights against the rigid body. So that's why we couldn't get any collisions working. Uh, no matter what I tried later on, I just couldn't get it. So we're actually moving away from that 
uh, and we're going to set the velocity and angular velocity to zero. And that'll give a very uh, nice effect where we can actually get collisions while we're holding our object. So get component, rigid body again, rigid body, and dot angular velocity now. Oops. Angular velocity, and we're going to set that to vector 3.0 again. Okay, now we want to set our parent object. So item dot transform dot set parent and open parentheses. And in here we want to set it to our temp parent object, which is going to be our guide transform. So we'll set that up in the inspector later. And so now, uh, let's see, we also want to detect if they're going to throw the object. For, so for that, we're going to use the control uh, of right mouse button. So down here we want to say if input dot get mouse button down one, then we're just going to say throw. Now we're going to come back to that later. So if is holding is true, now we want to check our else statement. So if it's false, then we want object uh, position to be set to item dot transform dot position. Now what this does is it kind of just it makes a way to save our current location for the object because uh, what happens if you don't do this is it'll just start teleporting all over the place whenever you let go and it'll just kind of glitch out and wig out like that. Uh, you're more than welcome to try it for yourself but I'm going to move on in this uh, script now. So uh, we're saving our position to our vector 3 that we made earlier and now we're going to say item dot transform dot set parent and we're going to go back to null so it's not parented anymore to our object or to our guide. Okay, and then item dot get component rigid body again, which I cannot spell dot use gravity, and we're setting that back to true. Okay, and now we want to actually use our saved position that we put into our vector three right here, and we want to say item dot transform dot position, and we want to set it to our vector three. Okay, so that's all good. So now if we save and we go back into Unity, so now that we're back in Unity, we come in, we see that we've got a couple things we have to do here. So first we have to set our item, which is just the item you want to pick up, so in this case the puzzle cube, and then our temp parent, which is our guide. So now that we've got that set up, everything should work just fine. So you can see we can pick up our object, walk it around, and it'll actually bump into the wall here. Now currently we can't throw it because we haven't set that up yet. But one thing that's worth noting is that if you get it stuck behind something, you can walk back and you're still holding it. And that's, that's kind of a big problem. Another thing is that when we let go and we're super far away, you can still pick it up, which is not something we want. We want to implement our distance that we made earlier. So let's go back into the script. Okay, so back in uh, Visual Studio, we're going to start by setting up our distance. So we want to come into our update function and we want to say distance and it's set that equal to vector3 dot distance and we're going to be checking the distance between our guide object and our item so we're going to start with item dot transform dot position and then comma and we're going to check it against our temp parent dot transform dot position and so now we're getting our, our uh, distance uh, variable and so now under that we want to say if distance is ever greater than or equal to 1f, then we want to set is holding to false. Now, similarly, uh, down here in our pickup function for on mouse down, uh, we want to check if distance, so lowercase d, distance is less than or equal to 1f. Now, this can be whatever number you want, that just changes how far the player has to be to pick it up. So if it's less than, or equal to 1f, then they can actually pick it up. And so that should set up our distance just fine. And so now what we want to do is we actually want to make our throw right here work. So we want to say item dot get component rigid body and we want to say add force this time. So add force and we're going to go off of our temp parent for direction. So temp parent dot transform dot forward. So by default this will send it forward along the z-axis. You can set it to whatever you want. Dot throw force, uh, which is our float that we made earlier. And then we want to set is holding 
to false. Okay, I believe this is it for the script. So let's go back into Unity. Okay, so back in Unity, if we press play, we should see that now if we come back way over here, we can no longer pick it up. Uh, if we're close, we can still do it. And also, if we get it caught again like we did before, and then pull back, it'll automatically drop if we get too far. Now, another thing to show off is you can now throw the object as well. So if we come here, pick it up, right-click to throw. So that's it. That's how to pick up, have collisions, and throw an object in a really simple script, easy to do. Thanks for watching.